Hello, Matt here from chemistrystudent.com. In this video, we're going to answer the question, what is organic chemistry? Chemistry is the study of substances, all the different elements and compounds that make up the world around us and how they react together. In the early days of chemistry, it was believed there were three main types of substance, animal, vegetable, and mineral. As animal and plant substances were both made by living organisms, they were later grouped together and called organic substances, and those that weren't, the minerals, were considered to be non-organic or inorganic as we now call them. As chemistry slowly progressed as a science, it became noticed that organic substances always seemed to contain carbon. Now, early chemists thought there was no overlap between the chemical reactions that happened outside a living thing and those that happened inside it. The idea that a chemical reaction in a glass container could be the same as a reaction inside a living organism wasn't considered at all. A real breakthrough moment came when an organic molecule known to be made by animals, called urea, was actually made in a laboratory outside of a living organism and inside a glass container. This showed that organic molecules don't have to come from or be made by living organisms. During the 1800s, when coal started being analysed, lots of new carbon-containing compounds were discovered, and the definition of organic chemistry started to widen and incorporate carbon-containing compounds from coal and, later on, oil. It started to be accepted that organic simply meant a substance that contained carbon, rather than refer to a substance that came from a living thing. Carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, as well as pure carbon and carbonates, weren't included, however, and as a result, to this day, still aren't considered to be organic substances. Two main branches of organic chemistry then developed to try and help separate organic molecules that are from organisms and those that aren't. Synthetic organic chemistry, which is the making of organic compounds in a laboratory, and biochemistry, which is the study of organic compounds and their reactions in living organisms. <laughs> Even today, there isn't always a clear distinction between the two, however, and they can and do often overlap. It may seem strange that there is a whole branch of chemistry centred around carbon, but carbon is actually a pretty special element. Carbon has four electrons in its outer shell and a valency of four, meaning it can make four covalent bonds to other atoms. This means even with a limited number of atoms of other elements, there are lots of possible ways all the carbon atoms can bond together, meaning lots of different molecules can be formed. In fact, over 98% of known substances are in fact organic. This is useful in nature, as to make a living thing, including you and I, we need loads of different molecules, and yet there is only a limited number of different elements that can be used to make them, many of which are too reactive or unstable to be much use anyway. Carbon's ability to make four bonds means a huge variety of molecules can be made from the same starting elements, most commonly carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, although there are many organic compounds that contain other elements as well. As organic molecules can be complex, reactions in organic chemistry can be hard to study, and some follow complicated pathways in which a molecule may change several times during a single reaction before a final product gets made. To try and understand what's going on, organic reactions are modelled using things called mechanisms, showing how, and hopefully why, certain reactions occur. We focus on how bonds get broken and made to form a product from a starting reactant, and the steps that may occur in the reaction as a result. Curly arrows are used to show the forming and breaking of bonds by considering the movement of electrons between atoms as covalent bonds are effectively made up of a pair of electrons. One arrow with a full arrowhead always represents a pair of electrons, and the arrows are drawn with the arrowheads pointing in the direction the electrons move in. 
Sometimes in a reaction, a molecule may react to form what's called an intermediate before going on to form a final product. An intermediate is just the name given to something that is formed in a reaction but isn't stable enough to be considered a product. The reaction hasn't finished yet. A bit like bread dough when making bread. The dough has been formed from starting ingredients, meaning you don't have reactants anymore, and yet what you've got isn't the finished product of bread. Intermediates are unstable and don't actually stay around very long at all. But the type of intermediate that gets formed in a reaction can give us a lot of information about how the reaction occurs and the pathway that it follows. This information can then be used to help propose a mechanism for the reaction. A bit like how the shape of bread dough is going to determine the final shape of the loaf. It is important to understand that mechanisms are models. They can't be considered to show exactly what occurs. Electrons and atoms don't follow rule books and reactions are never as clear as we represent them to be. Without using these models though, we would find it really hard to make progress in the study of organic reactions. So, to summarise. Organic chemistry is considered to be the study of carbon-containing molecules, ignoring carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. The most common organic substances contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. All other substances and molecules come under the bracket of inorganic chemistry, as in non-organic. Carbon is able to form four covalent bonds with other atoms, and this means there are lots of possible structures and substances that can be formed from only a limited number of elements and atoms. Mechanisms are used to show how organic molecules react. Curly arrows are used to show how bonds between atoms get made and broken, representing the movement of a pair of electrons. Structures formed during reactions called intermediates can give us useful information about the pathway a reaction follows, and mechanisms are often based around the structures of intermediates. I hope you found this video useful. Please check out other relevant videos in the links given in the description below, and visit chemistrystudent.com for free notes and revision materials.